Hello, everyone. Welcome to La Bini Me Knit Hour. I am so excited to be back for my second virtual knit knit night, knit hour. But today is actually not in the evening. We It is 1.30 p.m. here in Paris and 9.30 p.m. in Japan. I'm joined by my friends Aldo and Mari, who I met when I went, first went to Japan in 2000. What year was that? 2019. 19. 19. Yeah. Summer of 2019. Um, I met them when I went to a retreat in Japan, and it was really nice to meet these two knitters, and I've stayed friends with them ever since. Um, we're really excited to get to know them. They're going to tell us a little bit about their knitting stories and their perspective of what knitting is like in Japan. So before we start to chat with our friends, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the knitwear that you see here on screen. I have my newly finished Geo Gradient shawl here from the Stephen West knit along. I don't know if you guys participated. Um, we were super excited to participate in this one as we were one of the official dyers for the kits. Um, and I always really like a good mystery cowl and I feel like Stephen does a really good job um, curating those kinds of knit alongs. And so this was the Amy bundle that we offered on my website. And just as a funny story, before we get started with Mari and Aldo, they also participated in the Geo Gradient Knit Along. And to my surprise, they picked the same bundles, like the same colors. <laughs> so I thought we could show off our Geo Gradients at the same time. I think it's worth mentioning that it was not planned. No. <laughs> Oh, we just I think the, the same colors. We always speak the same colors. You guys have color sympathy for each other. You guys like the same colors. Yeah, and, and it's always the same colors that we choose. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. about> <laughs> and just to say, Aldo and Mari are knitting friends too. So, I mean, I have to say, I knit this kind of, I kind of get affected by my knit friends too. Sometimes they'll be knitting a color and it'll influence me to buy that color and cast on more than anything else in the like knitting industry. I will see other people knitting, but if my friends are knitting with a color, I'm going to be like, I need to knit with that color too. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So we, tiny, yeah. we have a couple fun samples here. You might recognize some new releases that uh, we were a part of. We have the Traveler Shell by Andrea Maori in two different versions here. This one's in Heliodor. This one's in Yellow Brick Road. And recently she just released the Traveler Shawl. Um, and we were really happy that she asked to collaborate with us. And so we put our twist on the Traveler Shawl by using a variegated colorway to kind of mimic the hand spun look that she used in her sample. And so this is our version of the Traveler Shawl that's just come out. And obviously we put a little pop of pink on the end because this is my favorite color, Flora Morganite. And I feel like I put it into everything that I knit right now. And then around the, around the mannequins next, we have two collars by a Japanese designer named Miki Teragaki. We have this, okay, I'm gonna mix this up. This one's Sonatine, Sonatine. And this one is the Cantabile collar that just came out recently. And we'll probably mention Miki Teragaki a little bit later when we start talking about knitting in Japan. So I would like to start out by um, introducing Mary. Mary, can you say your last name for us? Mari? Mari Hirayama, Hirayama. Hirayama. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, ma, yes. So Mari is a knitter that I met when I was in Japan in summer of 2019. She is known as Mint and Silk, Silk yes. on Instagram. Um, if you want to see some prolific knitting, you should follow Mari on Instagram. Uh -huh. She is constantly knitting and finishing projects. It's very, very motivating to watch her uh -huh. exploits. Um, Mari, would you please tell us about yourself? Give us a like okay. your knitting origin story and just uh -huh. a basic in in introduction, please. Okay, um, I'm Mari. I live in Tokyo with my husband and three kids. And I um, right now I work at um, Walnut Tokyo, which is a shop run by Amarisu. And um, how I started knitting, it's... Um, the first thing that I need was a, um, a cardigan for my um, daughter when she was a baby. 
I just, I, I didn't know how to knit, but um, I went into um, a shop, La Droguerie. It's a French. Yeah. And they had this um, sample of this really nice cardigan knit with cashmere. And I just love that. And I thought, oh, I'm going to knit that. And <laughs> I borrowed an um, old Japanese knit book from my mom. It was really old, but I just looked at that book and somehow I just knit that kit, you know, the cardigan. But um, I always wanted to learn how to knit, but I only am um, at that time, like 20 years ago, um, there's only like um, schools or like teachers that teach like old fashioned Japanese knitting, you know, oh. and I thought, no, not, not this. Then um, one day I found Amirisu and they were teaching, the Tokuko was teaching in Tokyo once a month. So I, th I thought, oh, this is it. It's really, you know, cool. The knitting is really cool. So I just started um, taking her classes and yeah, since then I've been knitting like six or seven years, I think. So it's only been six or seven years. So you've only been knitting for six or seven years, but you made that baby cardigan for your daughter because your daughter's 20, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so like 20 21 years, years, ago. years ago. Yeah. And I still have that. That cardigan was knit in Kashmir. Yeah. And my daughter wore it. My two boys wore it when they were little. Nice. And it's still keeping up and it's, I still have it. That's amazing. What an heirloom yeah. to keep. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you really learned to start knitting like six or seven years ago at Ami Risu because you were looking for a different kind of knitting. What was knitting like in Japan before you discovered Ami Risu? And um, I thought like knitting was for grandmas. It was sort of, you know, in Japan, I think at like 20 years ago, I think many people thought that, you know, the style because um, Japanese knitting, we usually only have one one um, size for like a garment or okay. anything. And it's usually so a little bit, you know, on the bigger Boxy, side. Boxy, oversized, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there's some knitting like um, teachers, you know, like they have a sign up on their um, house. And it's like a really old style Japanese. How cute. Would these people be, would they have another job? Would be, but like the knitting teacher, that would be their job. They were just a knitting teacher. Yeah, or like a half housewife sort of half, you know, teaching, you know. Interesting. Yeah. So did you didn't learn handicrafts like knitting at school, like they do in like Scandinavian countries? No, we don't, no, we don't do that in Japan. We don't have that. Okay. Only like sewing we have for only when I was a kid, only for girls, we had sewing like lessons at school and the boys made like wood things. <laughs> and that was the same in the United States. We had um, home economics. That's what they mm -hmm. called it in yes, America. Yes, yes. I think and it was like it was they taught you to cook and do all these kind of things, sewing and knitting. I never took those classes because I was more interested in the woodworking classes and the mechanical classes. Mm -hmm. And so, but our yeah. classes were open to both boys and girls. Um, yeah, but when we were like in um, junior high or high school, only the girls can only take that and the boys take the wood things, yeah. So no, once it's... you once you discovered knitting with Ami Risu and Walnut. So when we mentioned Walnut, this is the name of the yarn shop in Tokyo, Walnut Tokyo and Walnut Kyoto. Um, what did you? What was the most exciting thing that you learned initially when you discovered knitting? Um, um, when I, I, I never thought I didn't know about Ravelry at that time. You know, I had no no idea about those that kind of knitting okay. and um so the first knitting that I um learned was the the like the the patterns from like you knit like 
the can you give us some examples of like what designers what were the first designers you discovered on Ravelry I need a vest by <sighs> we can comb through your Ravelry later <laughs> uh, maybe yes and then I need uh, I can't remember we'll, we'll look it up and we'll link to your Ravelry so that we can okay, go back yes. and look at your projects yes so um yeah I've been knitting because the sizing you could choose and the knitwears are like the ones that are sold you know the yes, Japanese yes. Knit was like you could tell by seeing it that it's a hand knit thing so were but, you knitting mostly western designers designers from yeah, western I've, I've never knit with the japanese um japanese written pat the japanese style pattern i can't i can't read it oh. it's totally different Yes, yeah, if I can, if I can interrupt, I think one of the reasons is also because the patterns are just the graph, like the charts, like when you do like color work or cables. Yeah, a lot of Japanese patterns are literally just the chart. Yeah, and yeah. nothing else, no explanation, yeah. and like Mari said, like one size and good luck. Yeah, yeah, one size. I mean, I have never been able to knit like a classic Japanese pattern. I own many Japanese pattern books. Mm -hmm. I use Google Translate to translate, but most of them are charted so that I can kind of figure out more or less where things are going. Mm -hmm. um, so in your opinion, what are the differences? Like what, what are the, so the main differences between classical like Japanese knitting and like, I guess, modern knitting, like Western knitting is sizes. Yeah, sizes and Japanese knitting, it's like you could see it's like, you know, one page, it's read, it's like, uh, <laughs> what would you call it, Aldo? It's like a it drawing. Is, it's like yeah, a it's drawing. A chart. Of a, do you I have one? I, have, I don't know if I have any on hand yeah. um you will link to yeah. lots of japanese pattern books i mean i have lots of yeah. them i just don't want to hold them up and show them during my zoom but it is yeah. true the patterns are very short and they actually kind of remind me of patterns from scandinavia as well like if you ever knit like a just a norwegian or <laughs> Jaldo's laughing but like a danish Those pattern are extreme. sometimes it's just one page <laughs> makes leave yeah and you have to count by yourself the Japanese patterns, you have to sort of see it and then count and do it by yourself, you know, sort of, it's, I, I, I've i never done it. I, I don't I feel like it, they have like an assumption that you have a certain level of knitting already to no, dig in. I think so. uh -huh. Oh, that, that's really interesting. I always, I was always curious about that because I honestly really started getting interested in Japanese knitting when I got my first Ami Risu magazine, when it mm -hmm. first released. Um, and then I started researching, but then I realized really quickly that Ami Risu was taking a twist more towards modern knitting yes. as well. Um, so in the modern knitting world, who would you say would be like, popular Japanese designers that knit with more of a modern twist? Mm, Miki and uh, who? Megumi is also yeah, really... Megumi, yeah. yeah. She's seen the Zoom, yeah. Um, Megumi, yeah. And any other Japanese? I think there is. I can't... <laughs> Well, we're, okay. you're putting us on the spot. so we're Sorry, I'm putting things. you on the spot because I don't know if you necessarily, because you said you don't necessarily knit Japanese patterns. So no, let's I go don't. back to who you do knit. Who's your favorite? Who are your favorite designers to knit? Um, Yeah, I need like Megus and Mikis because they write like the modern style. They write right? in the modern style. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, I need Andrea Mari, Hohi. Yeah. And this sweater is by Yona. Yeah, enough from the, the editor of oh, Lina, yeah. Yeah, Lina. And yeah, I need everything. Anything that I, you know, I... That's coming I up need... as a popular design at the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe if someone's needing it, I'll, you know, yeah, I get inspired by people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah. Um do you have a regular knit night or do you knit with other Japanese knitters? 
me yes yeah. i yeah i meet with like megu and aldo <laughs> and Mickey and um yeah we have meet nights we meet with friends sometimes but actually um my friends from like school or other friends non-knitting friends not many of my friends knit only like one or two I think so they yeah they they are amazed like I I played like sports all my life so everyone is you know I'm surprised that I'm into knitting well, mm -hmm. I'm like you, Mari. I played sports too. I, I you know, I, I practiced tennis and taekwondo for a very long time. And I only really got into knitting in my late 20s, early 30s again. But I learned when I was a child. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. And a lot of my friends that I know from like before when I was living in the US, they don't even understand. They're like, you mm -hmm. knit and you have a business, yeah. you're knitting, <laughs> you know? And so yes, yes. They're like that too, for me too. Yeah, they are surprised that I'm into you know that kind of like, yeah, craft thing. Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing world. I always tell people, it's like, yes, it's amazing. You should try it. I tried to get people. I tried to teach as many people how to knit. Yes, me too. Can. So that's awesome. There's someone well, saying Midori Hirose and Junko Kamoto. Yes, I see that from the chat. Yeah. So Midori Hirose, and she's based in Europe. I think she's based yes. in. Germany. Germany and Junko Okamoto. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, we just finished a Kurt, a sample called Kurt mm -hmm. that she designed um, in our yarn. And it's really, really neat. Mm -hmm. I'll have to show that in another episode. But thank you so much for introducing yourself, Mari. Thanks. We're so excited thank to you. hear your point of view. I wanted to say hi to Aldo. Hi, Aldo. Hi. Hi. Nice. Um, tell us what you're wearing so we can get that out of the way and what you're knitting. Well, you did mention that we met in 2019, and this was your present for me. Oh, yay! I remember. It was skeins of Mondim and Lannister, I think. Yes. And I was making it a cardigan. I realized um, I did not like knitting flat. <laughs> so I made You don't like the sweater. pearl? Is that what it is? I, I just think the fabric was not what I expected. Um, the yarn and the pattern were not a match. Um, but then I made the So Basic by... Oh my God, he's going to kill me. I forgot. Maxime. Maxime Sear. Sear. Yeah. Uh, from Canada. And I, I've been wearing it a lot this winter. It's a stunning it's... sweater. I, I saw it in person the last time I was in Japan. He used yeah, his really Mondin in Lannister, and it's really, really beautiful. I just finished it this year, <laughs> even though I've been knitting it since 2019. I have um, to say, it's a fingering weight sweater, and Aldo is quite tall, so there was a lot of <laughs> torso and sleeves to knit. Yeah, it's a lot of sleeve. Um, What do you have uh... on your needles right now? I have a Vertices Unite, the beginning of it. Right now, it's, well, La Vianne and the Wandering Flock. I love it. I love it. So and you were telling me a little bit in our prep session that there's a special um, theme behind this Vertices Unite. Can you tell well, us about I it? Well, I just wanted it to be very, like, light colors very pastelly and they're all Asian dyers and I just think this is by Pirika Yarn from Akita it's like this very light blue I have some lemon jelly pool Oops, just trying it oh yeah it just all these like very um dreamy light colors that I just wanted to knit and also because I wanted to show it today because I only had um this on the needles which is this news fest it's oh I don't think a brioche I see that. cardigan that? it's a cardigan it's all brioche it. oh. and the yarn it's like this black very rustic yarn 
from the Wooly Mammoth. Oh, nice. Uh, I got it. It was like some limited edition yarn from like, it must have been like three years ago. Is it and, a natural black wool? Yeah, it's undyed. Yeah. It's like knitting with a Brillo pad. But <laughs> uh, so I thought I would show something a little bit more interesting than, <laughs> than just black brioche. But well, before we <laughs> we before we continue talking about knitting, I would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience and like tell us about yourself and like where you're from originally and what you're doing in Japan. And you're obviously your knitting story too. Yeah. Okay, so I'm originally from Mexico. I've been in Japan since 2017. So it's coming up on 7 years now almost. Um, well, I, I came here to do a master's degree and that's important for the knitting backstory okay. because, um, yeah, yeah, it was the first summer break after I had gotten here. So it was like the end of the first semester and I was living at the dorms of the university and everyone left. So I didn't have anyone to hang out with. And I went to YouTube. I looked out how to make a hat. And then I went to like the dollar store to Daiso to Daiso, yeah. I had no clue. I was absolutely lost. And I was like, what looks similar to what they're showing on YouTube? That's what I bought and like to practice. Um, and yeah, it was basically YouTube and me being bored. But then my master's degree was at a Japanese university. Hmm. And I didn't understand 80% of what was being said in class. <laughs> but I didn't want to fall asleep. So I was knitting the whole time. <laughs> How would how did that go over with your teachers while you knitted in class? Well, I guess they also I think they understood that it was better than me falling asleep. Okay. And I mean I, I was trying to be attentive. I was like I, I tried to at least get to that stage where I can like knit and purl without it taking a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. So I so I could kind of like pay attention or at least nod when I had to. So they were fine with it, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, it was, that's how I started knitting. And then I got, from the university, there was um, kind of like this home visit program. So we had dinner at a Japanese family's house. Okay. And this lady was part of a knitting class. And she invited me to go with her. But, and, and it was like what Mari was describing, it was, we would meet at this very old coffee shop uh, twice a month. And it was this older teacher, this older lady who was teaching us. And basically what people would do is like bring a pattern and she would kind of like guide people through it. But it was it was very much what Mari was saying, like the charts or things that just looked very incomprehensible to me. Oh. But yeah, I think I it was like a lot of trial and error, I think, because I was kind of like learning to knit in not my language and like Googling things. And I think what also happened was that there were a lot of things that are so obvious to knitters. Like in the first hat I made, I got stuck for like a day or two because I finished the ball of yarn and I didn't know how to join yes. the second one. And yes. there were, and it was like, well, just knit. And I'm like, but how? But how? <laughs> and now like, this is a universal question that I, I used to be yarn shop owner. And I would have new yeah. come in and be like, I went all the way to the end of the ball. And like, literally they'd come in, there would be this much yarn left. Yeah. And they're like, how do we 
start the next one. And so, you know, and I, I thought about it and I was like, yes, it's a very abstract concept if you don't know, you know, yeah. and at some point somebody taught me too. Um, so what were the patterns that you were knitting? Obviously you were meeting with this lady like twice a month, mm -hmm. was she having you knit like Japanese patterns or were you finding at this time, had you found Ravelry? I hadn't found Ravelry. I think it was well, first of all, it was like a YouTube channel. I don't remember which hat pattern, but it was like, oh, not, not the thumbs Oh, you just did it. <laughs> That's um, funny. <laughs> it was, um, it, it was like a very basic hat. Like the whole pattern was on the YouTube video. Hmm. Um, the first, and then I, I wanted to make a pair of socks and I bought um, a Japanese book on how to make socks oh, and it was it but how was that it was, oh it was I mean I I succeeded I would I did make a wearable pair of socks but it was just like um like a chart it was worked from a chart and I had no clue same google translate uh it took me forever but hmm. uh the first sweater I made was a raglan by Hohi Hilokatelli in alpaca. Actually, I still have an extra skein from that first sweater. Oh wow. And um it's it's very soft, undyed alpaca. I didn't know what a gauge swatch was. <laughs> I was like, that's completely unnecessary if I <laughs> <laughs> if I use the same needles, it should be fine. And it was not. It was, did the sweater it's fit? <laughs> it's so tiny. It it did. It did fit, but it didn't fit like I wanted to. It was just like, it was kind of like negative ease. Yeah. But it's still wearable. Um, and the alpaca just keeps growing. So it now really I can does. just wear it around the house. Yeah. And like, it's a comfortable sweater. Um. So what's what it like else? being an expat in Japan and a knitter? Uh, I don't know how to answer this question. I mean, it's great that I've been able to make friends mostly online, basically. Just people that would be easier for me to communicate to and like communicate with. And that's why uh, when I first contacted you, I was not really that experienced of a knitter um but it was like um and I also became friends with Katie mm, and you met at the event in in, in uh, yeah so it, it's kind of like meeting people like that or like I've also participated in a few kind of like yarn swap um things that they usually do around Christmas where you send like a skein of yarn to someone they send. Oh yeah. Someone yeah. Else sends it. yeah. So I've, that's kind of how I, well, quote unquote, like networked and in, in knitting. And I, I was armed with, I don't know, blind confidence and a lot of ignorance. And I was able to do a lot in knitting. Um, yeah, and that's because I, I, I don't know if I should start showing some of my stuff because well, it's kind yeah, of connected. We'll have a little show and tell in a minute, but um, I'm just reflecting on what you said about being an expat in Japan because I'm an expat in France, and how yeah. you said you knew you needed to go online to meet people, I did the exact same thing. I feel like this is like, this is definitely a global mm. phenomenon. I remember when I moved to France back in the day, um, I wasn't even on Facebook yet. <laughs> so that's how long I've been here. And I went onto this website called Friendster. I don't know if you guys remember this, but like I looked up oh, people way back, <laughs> way back in the day. Right. And I would look for people who had the same interests as me. Like you could search by interest and find people. And I found some of my best friends that I have today that way. Um, I also had a blog and that was a, that was a great way to meet people as well. But yeah. all of like my really close knitting friends that I have today, we met through the internet and blogging, yeah. 
either Ravelry or social media back in the day. So it's so interesting for you to say that too, because it's like so familiar to me. Yeah. Well. Wow. So yeah. So tell me, um, have you do you knit Japanese patterns today? Or do you mostly stay within the modern knitting patterns? I just say um mostly modern knitting, but out of convenience, just you know, Ravelry, it's really easy kind of like stock, like just hoard patterns. Yeah. And if I see something on Instagram or it's just really easy to like just go on there and get what I want to knit or like yeah. find if I have something in mind, it's really easy to like filter. Yeah. And find exactly what I want. Yeah. So I kind of stuck to that. Um Although I do enjoy a lot of like the Japanese bitch dictionaries. I do too. Yes. Not necessarily. They're not necessarily patterns, but just they're so beautiful to look at. So I have a bunch of those books. I don't have any on hand, but. I have those uh, too, actually. And they are really beautiful to look at. But actually, I like to sit down. And never, it's really easy to sit down and swatch. Hmm from that book actually because you don't need to cast yeah. over stitches. you can just go and learn some techniques and do some interesting mixes yeah. of bits and pearls um I did want to ask you about some of the knitting that you have on hand because before we started okay. Aldo was kind of showing off a few things and so can you show us a few of your finished objects lately uh sure these are not lately I'm going to connect it to the way back when okay let's go way back <laughs> when and then we'll we'll circle up into lately uh this was I think sweater number two or three that I knit and it was like I the remember that one back when and I well like I said I had no clue what I was doing and I was like oh the test knit like that sounds like fun um Camila Vad, is that how you say her yeah. name? Yeah, she's a Danish designer. Uh, I yeah, she she said yes to the for to me test knitting and I messaged you on Instagram and I was like, hey, I'm gonna test knit this. It's using your yarn. And you kind of gave me some color advice. Um and I just remember thinking like, oh, she's very nice. But lately, you know, um, and then there was like some math that we did wrong in, in our back and forth. And I was missing a skein of mohair. And you were like, oh, I just added another skein of mohair um, because we did the math wrong. So here you go. <laughs> and I've, so I had that sweater from way back when. And then there's... Yes. So the, let me well, give you a little backstory brother. on this. I did not know Aldo's knitting experience back then. I just assumed he just, he, his confidence in knitting came through in writing as well. And so I just assumed like he knows how to knit everything. And so we collaborated together on this vertices, this version of the vertices unite, because I was coming to Japan and he graciously offered to knit my sample for me um, because I was juggling a million things. I have to say, it is one of the most impeccable samples that I've ever had knit. The the it's, I know that it's garter stitch and it's like modular knitting, but it was so perfectly knit and all the ends woven in perfectly that it's one of my most cherished samples that I have. And this is actually not knit by me. There's uh, my friend Katie who I've talked about a couple of times she bought the kit so I could have my own version of the yarn. Of the oh my gosh and I... it's so cool to see the pooling yeah. of Curious Handmade in the main section yeah. because the pooling on my on my sample is different and I will um when I edit this video I'm going to pop a photo in so that we can see the difference. Aldo hold it up to the screen really quickly so we can see the pooling of the, oh, the handmade. Curious Handmade. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it kind of makes like this like almost like a houndstooth pattern. sort of like a crisscross where you can see the dark and the light it's incredible yeah. um it's different than mine so yeah and so those are like the the back when projects <laughs> love that uh, 
And while the I'm starting a new one, like I said, but in much lighter colors. And then recently I had this kick on, I just wanted everything to be green and pink. <laughs> so oh, this is the wrong side. And I love that. I just, I had made the Sophie shawl by Petit Knit. Um, and then I had seen the, the bandana like pattern. And I was like, well, I want something that's like a little bit um, deeper than mm. I don't know why. it's so unruly. So I wanted like the, this to be kind of like, you know, deeper, larger. Yeah, the apex of the triangle the, the deeper, yeah. But I also wanted to be longer than the bandana. Yeah. So I kind Are of you... just made a, Frankenstein of both that's incredible I love it and also and it, you told me because you told me that was like two meters long or something like two and a half two and a half meters long that's definitely a shawl for Aldo he's tall I will you when you guys rewatch this I'll post a photo of us together you can see he's like a head taller than me that would be a scarf that I could not wear it would like drag on the floor <laughs> if I wore and it. talking about me being tall I also made this sweater oh my gosh I saw this one on social media it's so cute and Tell us about the again, yarn. with it's Gilead and then it's uh Pirika yarn from Akita mm. prefecture um but as you can see like it's it's monstrous and that's what I wanted I just like this is like a 3xl size and then I knit it in like well, I used like thicker yarn and also larger needles and the pattern said. Yeah. Because I was like, I wanted to find something that for me felt oversized. Oh, I, I would could... love to see some styling of that. Maybe we can get some photos later of how you style it. That would be enough yeah. to wear knits over knits. Like you could layer up your knits underneath it. Yeah. And it's an, all, I think it's like an all season sweater because it kind of looks Christmassy. <laughs> with the green and the red but it's also very like spring colors I love it but I also wanted it to be like Freddy Krueger Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street but this is kind of like the sweet dreams version nice very nice so, yeah I think that's I think Madi should show us some. So. Yeah, definitely. I think I saw that Maddie just threw on a collar around her neck. Can you tell us oh, about it? Is. Yeah. This is um Sonata, Sonata collar yes. by Miki. Yeah. Meet with your um Cory, Cory worsted. I've got one here too. Uh, I love this. I I wear this all the time. It's nice to when it's a little bit cool, cool on your shoulders. Yes, yes. And and it goes. It covers just the top of your yeah. back. So it's like the perfect and, little yeah. accessory. You feel like a little bit fashionable wearing this. Definitely. You know? Um, my favorite thing when I style this is I have another one in Yellow Brick Road. Is I wear a Yellow Brick Road cardigan with this one on top of it. Yeah. And it always mm -hmm. intrigues people. They come over and they're yeah. like, "Is that all one?" pattern like what's going on yeah. so it's like conversation Maybe you should need a cardigan or a sweater with this olive juice color that would be cute because this color is really you know I love this so speaking of Miki um you've knit some other pattern and I have one of her yes. sweaters on the needles right now yeah this one right So yeah, it's hard to see because her sweater's yeah. so dark. Let me hold mine up a little bit here. You can kind of see it. It's a top-down raglan with this very, very fun frill right here. Um, this is a, when I saw this design, I got super excited and Miki used um, Le Bien Aimé Felix held double for the body. And then for the frill, it's um, Felix plus Kumo. Yeah. Yeah. And Mari's is a little bit more low contrast. You can see how the colors are very close to each other in the body and the frill. And so my frill is a little lighter. 
Yeah. So these are these are two designs that we're talking about from a Japanese designer named Miki Teragaki, who I've been collaborating with recently. And um, she is, uh, isn't she a colleague of yours at Amirisu? Yes, or, yes. Yeah. She, she teaches at, um, she's a teacher at um, Amirisu. Oh, yes. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So she's teaching modern style knitting. Yes, she is. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely. I have a question for you because we um, we want to keep the knit hour to one hour. So we're we have about 15 minutes left. And I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. um, and you can each, each answer it. Um, how do you think the Japanese knitters differ from other knitters from other parts of the world? Mm -hmm. Who would like to Maybe start? Here. I can start so with my doesn't. Yeah. Well, okay. there's two things that come to mind really quickly. And uh, the first one is because the people dress here is probably not as tight fitting as it is oh. in Europe or in America. Yeah. So I think a lot of knitters are much more willing to experiment with the shape of what they're doing. They're like a little bit less attached to like having a defined waistline or or you know like the length being a cropped or i'm just giving examples that are necessary but no but it makes think, sense because i've witnessed these things when i've been in japan i noticed this that's interesting so yeah. so people are much more adventurous with the shapes that they knit and the other thing and is that um I think a lot of people, because they they value a lot of like the handmade aspect. Mm -hmm. So even if you go to like a um, like a craft store, yarn is going to be expensive. So um, a lot of people knit with hand dyed yarns just because the the difference in price might not be as big as it could be in America, mm -hmm. and they're aware that they're knitting something that's going to stay with them. Like Mari was saying in the beginning, like a cardigan that she knit mm -hmm. for her daughter uh, all those years ago. And like, there's, there's very, generations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's like a lot of value to handmade things that I think kind of gets lost in the West. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. What about you? What do you think, Mari? Yeah, but um, I think that's the knitters around us, I think. There are knitters well, that's that true. Um, knit with like the 100 yen shop um, mm. yarns. Mm. Yes. And um, I think they enjoy knitting too, I think. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, we have this thing in the West as well. Yeah, yeah. and um, I don't know, because I'm a Japanese knitter, I don't know what what's different from others because I'm sort of the middle I, I I'm in the Japanese knitting world but I'm in sort of you know friends with you and I know all the you know I'm I'm in the western you know modern yeah. world too so I don't know what's different um yeah okay. it's well, I have a, I have a, I have a little thought on this too because I've been visiting Japan since summer of 2019, and um, each time I go, I always notice little different, different little trends in fashion. I definitely agree with the shapes um, and the way Japanese um, people in general dress. They they want to play around with volume and proportions. Um, I feel like they all dress for the perfect canvas of wearing something neon because they're all dressed very neutral. Like it's always very neutral and very chic. And so I always want to go and be like, I would throw on a hot pink something with that or something like that, you know, and I love, I love that. Um, but I do really get excited when I look at Japanese designs by Japanese designers, um, the different proportions they have, um, like maybe they'll do something interesting with the sleeve and they'll put like cables on there. Like I would never think to do that. Um, this sweater that I just finished by Junko Okamoto, it's got like a V in the front, but also a V in the back. That's a different depth. And so it's like, almost like I have two sweaters in one, I can turn it around and it has a different look, 
and things like that. And I just really, I really love that. There's like these little details that kind of pop out that I don't necessarily always see in Western um, designers patterns. And so that's the kind of things I, I look for when I look at Japanese designs. Cause like also they do do kind of cater to the one size kind of fits all. It doesn't necessarily fit me. I'm outside of that realm, but I can still get some value from looking at the designs and saying like, oh, I love how they did that sleeve construction. I love how they did that V-neck. Oh, I love, you know, those colors that they put together too, because also that's another thing, but that's a whole nother chapter, another knit hour to talk about is Japanese sensibility to colors mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been, um, I know like um, many knitters, they only knit with like grays and like beige at <laughs> first, but, you know, gradually they look at, you know, like things that we are wearing and say, you know that's really nice but it wouldn't fit me and they try it on they say oh that's good yeah and I think they are gradually getting into like you know like I agree so, yeah these frills they would you know and it's cropped and many people have said that you know that's too short for me or the frills are not for like all the you know women but when they try it on they say wow that's good and it that actually fits, fits. Yeah, and it looks really good on everyone, you know. Yeah. And so I think they are gradually, you know, their mindset is gradually um, changing. Yeah, they are yeah. Accepting a little bit more like color range. Absolutely, absolutely. Which I've been able good. to witness that because I've been back to Japan three times, and each time I come with a different trunk of samples mm -hmm. to share, and it's always really exciting to see the knitters try on something that they that necessarily I don't think that they would ever think to knit or wear and then they're like wait a minute this color actually looks great mm -hmm. on me I like it you know and so that's really exciting to see yeah all right we're coming to the end of our knit hour and I am going to ask you two questions these are very easy questions and it's the same question for both of you we'll start with Aldo and then we'll go to Mari if you Ooh. could be a knit stitch any yeah. stitch or technique, which one would you be? I'm going to go with Brios. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Literally, every time I've seen Aldo, he's been knitting something in Brioche. Yeah. It's just so, I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. It's really springy and very, very warm. Traps a lot of air. Yeah. So I, I hope I... I do hope people describe me the same way. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Mari, if you, if you could be a knit stitch or technique, what would mm -hmm. you be? I, I want to be a, like a color work sweater. I'm not very good at it, but I like to be, you know, really good at um, color work. And I like all the colors blending in. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I like to choose colors. So, yeah, I like to be a, a color work sweater, <laughs> all over color work sweater. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, my technique would be always the same technique that I've always been talking about for the last year is intarsia, um, which is, a, is another color work technique. Um, but mm -hmm. I just really have been obsessed with this technique since I really kind of delved into it about four years ago. So yeah, my technique would be intarsia. Gotcha. So, all I right. Tried it, well, yeah, I tried intarsia for the first time with your um, Neons and Neutrals book, um, the Videra. The Videra, but, yeah. Uh, and I, I thought, you know, it's not that hard. No. I, I thought it was really complicated. No, but, it's yeah, it's easier than color work, honestly. Yes, I think yeah. so, yes. Yeah. I well, we'll definitely that. pop up a photo of you wearing your Videra. I took some really nice pictures of you when I was in Japan. Yes. And it, she did a Videra with no sleeves. Yes. Yes, oh, which was super wearing it all the time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you, you guys, for this knit hour. This was super fun. Um, I yes. love having this moment to be able to catch up with you, talk about knitting in Japan and your perspectives. 
Um, I want to thank everyone who's joined us. We had we had quite the crowd joining us from Japan, which was very exciting. So thank you so much for joining. And we hope to have another knit hour um, very soon, probably after the holidays. So thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.